I'd like to talk about Beethoven's pathetic sonata and the first bars of the opening movement after the slow introduction. Johann Ferdinand Schoenfeld wrote a musical yearbook on Vienna and Prague in 1796. And this remains a major source when it comes to Beethoven's Vienna of those years. Now, Schoenfeld talks about two distinct schools of forte piano building. We have the so-called Walter type and the so-called Streicher type. Walter refers to the Viennese builder Anton Walter, and Streicher refers to Nanette Streicher, who was the daughter of Johann Andreas Stein. Equally so, Schoenfeld continues, we have two classes of forte piano players. One of these loves to play with rich tones, extremely fast, study the most difficult runs and the fastest octaves. To the virtuoso of this kind, we recommend a Walter-type forte piano. The other looks for nourishment of the soul and prefers a sweet and melting kind of playing. This type of player cannot choose a better instrument than a Streicher or a so-called Stein type. How can we make this more concrete? Well, one technological feature that sets apart a Walter piano from a Streicher piano is the presence or absence of a so-called back check. What is a back check or short check? Well, it's this part. We can take it out, we can put it in. And it's designed to catch the hammer as the hammer falls down. So you immobilize the hammers so you can strike it again relatively quickly. Or you can hit the key hard and the back check will catch the hammer. Now, if you don't have a back check, this is what would happen. The hammer bounces up again. Let's see if I find, oh, look at this one. This one is very loose. So you risk hitting the string more than once, twice, maybe perhaps even three times. Okay, let's now look at the opening bars. We see here Allegro di Molte con Brio, so extremely fast, virtuosic. Yet we start piano. We have in the left hand a so-called murky bass, very fast alternating octaves. Um, and then we have in this bar crescendo. So Beethoven is asking you to add force on that fast movement in the left hand. Um, let's try, let's do a little experiment and try to play this first without the help of a back check and then with the back check and see if we notice any difference. So this is clearly without. I just took out the back check rail. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to play the left hand alone. Good, but I'm following the natural bounce of the hammer. I'm listening to what the action, the mechanics are doing, and I'm adjusting my speed to it. Now, if I were to try a faster tempo, and if I were to in implement that crescendo, I think I'll run into trouble. a few of the notes and if you were to look here visually you can see that um, my hand movements and the hammer movements are not synchronized at all it's all over the place now let's compare the same thing with the back check and I'm going to immediately try the fast tempo. It's 
much more controlled. Now I can exert my will, or Beethoven's will, on the musical material. Um, and I control the techno technology, so to speak, thanks to that back check. It's controlled passion, controlled patheticness. And now it's interesting to turn this into a story of a composer, performer, Beethoven, and a builder of pianos. With his pathetic sonata, one could say that Beethoven is telling a builder like Nanette Streicher to please incorporate the back check in your piano stew. And that's exactly what Nanette Streicher will do, but only six years after the publication of the pathetic. Back in 1797, when Beethoven composed the pathetic, Beethoven clearly was a Walter-type pianist who would have loved, as Schoenfeld describes rather sarcastically actually, a strong feast for the ears or powerful noise of the kind that would have required a powerful piano like that of Anton Walter, and specifically that would have required the technological feature of a back check. <laughs> 